Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the first edition of the Policy Dialogue Series themed COVID-19 impact on startups and investors in Nigeria. My name is Habiba Zibiri, and I will be your host for today's session. I'd like to run us through the activities for today's session and how they will be conducted. So first of all, we're going to have Adese Chopin, who will be the moderator for today's session, and she will be moderating the panel's discussion for today. After that, we will have our Q&A session, which will come up immediately after Adese has completed the panel session. And this will be on for about 20 minutes. The session is to ensure that questions not answered during the discussion or questions that are more personalized for participant startups are answered. After the Q&A session, we will have an online polling session where we will vote on the topics discussed today and the way forward for everyone. Finally, Adese will take us through the feedback session, which will help us evaluate the delivery of today's session. A quick background about um, our sponsors for today. Today's session is sponsored by the UK Nigeria Tech Hub. The UK Nigeria Tech Hub is a new initi initiative by the UK government's Department of Digital, Culture, Media and Sports, the DCMS, to support the growth of startup ecosystem in Nigeria. The UK Nigeria Tech Hub works to stimulate the local digital economy, support inclusive and sustainable economic growth and jobs using digital skills and forging innovative partnerships between local tech sectors and international businesses. The hubs are one pillar of a broader digital access program, which aims to catalyze digital inclusion across Africa. As a secondary benefit, it is working in forging innovation partnerships between local tech sectors and international business will lead to more trade and investments in the longer term, driving increased productivity and growth. With the onset of the outbreak and the global spread of COVID, the COVID-19 pandemic, the Nigerian startup ecosystem is now experiencing unprecedented shocks and significant losses. While the need for social distancing is creating new windows of opportunity and accelerating adoption of digital platforms, the vast majority of early stage startups are having significant pressure on cash flow, financing, supply chain, and customer demand. These challenges and problems are precisely some of the reasons why much emphasis should be placed on the need for government and partnering stakeholders to understand precisely how the pandemic is affecting startups, which sectors are worst hit, and what areas of their businesses are most affected, and how investor behavior is changing. During today's session, our panelists will discuss the research findings based on the research conducted by the UK Nigeria Tech Hub and the way forward. Now I'd like to introduce our moderator for today, Adeze Shokan, the Director of Design and Strategy of Ventures Platform Foundation. Adeze Shokan is the Director of Design, Strategy and Quality Assurance at Ventures Platform Foundation. She has a diverse experience in expertise and expertise having worked with relevant stakeholders in the startup ecosystem in Nigeria. Her passion and commitment to Africa's development through enterprise development and innovation has equipped her with the relevant skills in program design and strategy, partnership formulation, program management, social innovation, policy analysis, fundraising, and leadership. She will be moderating the panel discussion that we will be holding for the next 35 minutes. Everyone, please join me in welcoming Adeze Shoko.
Hello, everybody. Uh, good morning. Can you hear me very well? Uh, my name is Adesa Shukwan. I'm the Director of Design and Strategy at Ventures Platform. It's so great to be here, and I'm excited to be moderating this panel today. And this panel is themed COVID-19 impact on startups and investors. It's founded on a survey that was conducted by the Nigeria UK Tech Hub with the objective to support the we investors as well, play a critical role by providing the field that lies at growth so they can create economic growth and impact at scale. Crises can stimulate entrepreneurship and innovation through reallocation of unproductive assets to new ventures that exploit emerging opportunities. Crises can also hamper innovation if not properly managed. So to reap the numerous benefits such as economic growth through job creation, taxes, infrastructure growth, and going to be a really engaging conversation. And to do justice, it's an amazing crop of expert panelists we have here today. I will start by introducing uh, Honey Ogundei, who is the country director of uh, the UK Nigeria Tech Hub and partner of the Policy Dialogue Series. Uh, welcome you, Honey. We also have on our panel Oluwa Tomi Sholanke co-founder of True Finance, a micro-investing platform that lets Nigerians invest in publicly traded US, Nigerian, and Chinese stocks, government bonds, and more. You're welcome to me. Um, we also have investment, I'm a venture investor driving growth in the, com in the companies that form the foundation for Sub-Saharan Africa's robust digital marketplace. And finally, we have uh, Ife Adebayo, who is currently the acting special assistant to the vice president on innovation and entrepreneurship, where he advises his excellency, the vice president, about issues on technology, innovation, and entrepreneurship. We welcome you all to the panel. The goal of our conversation today is to discuss relevant action undertaken by key stakeholders, government, hubs, startups, investors, to mitigate the threats to startups and investors during this crisis. The second goal is to identify priority interventions, whether policy or initiatives that we can agree upon as a next course of action to enable startup ecosystem support and growth. All right, so let's dive in. I'd like to invite all the panelists to start off by giving their opening statements as to the current state of business during the pandemic in terms of the challenges, in terms of opportunities. But I'd like to start with Honey um, to first give um, her remarks on the study before we produce, uh, proceed to the other panelists. Uh, Honey, if you're on, you can, you can speak now. Hello, honey, can you hear me okay? Can you hear me? Hi, Adese, good morning. Hi, honey, we can hear you now. Hi, apologies. So I just had some network issues, but I got it all fixed. Um, all right. Good morning, it's a pleasure right. to be here. Um, what would you like me to discuss? Just what we're here to... Yeah, so just to make remarks. remarks on the study. Great. So... Um, um, I, I was uh, saying that I wanted to give your remarks on the study. Yeah, sure. Happy to happy to, to give you an introduction to the survey. So the COVID impact survey on early stage startups and investors was commissioned by the UK Nigeria Tech Hub uh, in May earlier this year. And we wanted to survey both the early stage tech community and also investors to better understand how um, the pandemic is affecting startups. 
Um, we wanted to better understand how um, the current impact and also what could be the possible interventions and programs. Uh, just to give you a little background on the UK Nigeria Tech Hub, uh, the UK Nigeria Tech Hub is an initiative by uh, DCMS um, UK government and partnership with the High Commission in Nigeria to support the growth of the tech ecosystem in Nigeria. Uh, we work with all the key stakeholders from startups, companies, to policy providers, to um, accelerators, to basically strengthen the tech ecosystem in, in Nigeria. Um, after the COVID pandemic, uh, sort of at the onset of the pandemic, one of the things that we started doing was speaking to members of the community to better understand how we could support them at this time. And that included DFI, government. And one of the things that struck out to us was that everybody was looking for a better understanding around data and evidence to better structure their programs. And so that's where the idea for the survey came out from. We noticed that there was a lot of webinars and a lot of education and a lot of uh, intervention programs. We wanted to support the community by letting everyone, including startups, have a better understanding of what other colleagues are going through um, to better understand and also to help those uh, like ourselves, hubs and accelerators, better just design programs and interventions that can actually support uh, startups at this time. And so that was the background in which we went into the survey, uh, working with implementing partners to release it. Uh, we spoke to not only startups and companies, but investors. And I think there we started to see unique insights come out from both uh, parties. We understood critically that, for example, startups on average had six months of working capital. Um, to run their businesses we understood we could understand which sectors were worst affected so you could see some sectors for example like health tech um, do particularly well uh, or not as as affected by the pandemic and seeing investors saying that they had an increased interest in those sectors but on the other hand you could see some sectors like agriculture which has been affected by the supply chain distribution uh, disruptions um, and e-commerce of course in fact impacted by transport really heavily impacted by the crisis um, speaking to investors was also interesting you see that in Africa, or at least in Nigeria, most investors were planning to continue to invest, uh, probably with a renewed focus on particular sectors. And they were also asking startups to perhaps look at uh, evolving the, you know, the business models, etc. We can also see from startups that, for, for example, was very to them. Uh, so these were some of the key critical insights that, that we started seeing from the survey. And uh, we're really pleased with some of the impact that, that it started to have in the tech ecosystem. And I think this conversation is really just to continue a continuation of that work and to better understand from all the different stakeholders that we have today in the call and also joining in the audience and to see where are people being affected, what, what uh, can government do, what policies should we put in place to continue to support the long-term and short-term uh, recovery of the tech sector at this time, which we know is a huge contributor uh, in Nigeria to GDP and is one of the fastest growing sectors outside of non-oil sectors. Uh, that's it from my side, over at Daisy. ecosystem are structured in the U.S. and value our numbers are growing on a Naira basis um, that is not translating into dollar-based growth and, and that is really impacting valuation. Um, we've seen uh, a lot of companies in certain subsectors cut their operational expenses by 30 to 50 percent um, some have been slow to do that. Some haven't needed to. Uh, certainly some industries are continuing to, to move forward in this. Um, but we, uh, you know, we also expect that a lot of these, you mentioned uh, working capital and a lot of these companies being six months. We think that that is a very narrow margin um, and would see a lot of um, early stage rounds, meaning seed, not necessarily pre-seed, but seed rounds that are doing a much more global fundraise, something in the range of one to $5 million. We are expecting those to be delayed by 12 to 18 months and cash preservation is certainly key there. Um, a lot of that effect is, is certainly from our sides as well. Our investors that invest in funds are going to be a lot slower to deploy, deploy and that's having an overall funnel effect on the, the companies in general. 
Uh, interestingly, we have seen a lot of enterprise focused tech businesses have their revenues accelerate um, over demand of increased digital integration. And the time, uh, I think, probably also just um, a lot of the remote work has actually given a lot of people more time to move products through the pipeline. Um, so we've certainly seen a lot of our B2B focused companies really have record first quarters, even doubling revenues um, from fourth quarter. Um, so that's just um, some comments from us. Uh, I think there is um, uh, language and support from the government to try to boost several sectors in healthcare, education, ag, and tech are those verticals. Um, what that actually looks like is yet to be seen, and I think this is a great initiative to try to push those policies. Um, I'm concerned that there's a lot of talk and less action, um, and we've already seen that with stimulus deployment and what that looks like in Nigeria. Back over to you, Adesi. Thank you very much, Lexi. Um, so I'd like to go to um, uh, if uh, uh, since that, that's a good segue to to go to, go to government, um, the research shows that um, there, there are certain sectors that are um, you know are being hit by the pandemic, and I know that the, the government has come up with a, an economic sustainable plan um, to highlight these sectors um, and and shows that we need to prioritize this sector. So, if I don't know if you can just share. Um, Quickly, or what interventions the, the government is undertaking? Um, is it all talk? Is there action going on? Um, and what 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 are these interventions, and how do they help to impact, reduce the impact of the crisis for startups as well as um, those investing? If I, over to you. Uh, thank you very much, Adeze. Um, it's a pleasure being here, and it's good to have this sort of conversation. So I, I think, um, like, you know, the government had initially um, put forward a 50 billion naira package um, that was supposed to help uh, um, companies who were struggling within this period. And um, a lot of companies have applied for that. A lot of them have been receiving, um, have been receiving um, their funds from this. Um, I, I got a lot of feedback from people who, you know, who I didn't even know had applied and that told me, oh, I applied for this and I got it. And I think um, a lot of um, within the startup ecosystem also applied and like getting some form of support from this. But that was prior, of course, to the Economic Sustainability Plan, um, which has now been approved to president that it's going to give. And like you said, um, the sectors that were, that were sort of um, pinpointed by the um, UK Tech Hub um, um, report um, are also the sectors that are being um, specifically focused on by government. Um, so the government will be building um, housing um, um, in, in, in their tens of thousands. I mean, this which will not only solve the issue of housing in the country, but will also provide opportunities for companies, entrepreneurs, for people working within that space. Um, there will also be specific support for people with this, um, which will look at um, payroll support. Um, those who are having issues paying, um, paying salaries and um, keeping their staff within this period and keeping their staff engaged within this period will get support. Um, people who are having um, issues with supply um, will also get support. Um, there will also be specific support for people in the agriculture space and um, 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 and um, other, 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 other MSMEs. Um, but beyond that also, um, what we've been doing prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, which we are now speeding up, is um, we've been working on a Nigerian innovation program um, which is to be supported by the African Development Bank and um, is intending to raise a fund of up to $500 million. Um, so this fund is supposed to support four key sectors, which is PP Hub, the people at the UK Tech Hub, 
are we going to drive policy, government policy around supporting you? And um, this is something that we're moving on really quick, um, re really fast now. We had the pre-feasibility study stage done already. The feasibility study is currently in the works. So, um, so just in summary, these are some of the, some of the things that um, the government is currently doing in this space. Sounds and good. Well, I, in terms of timelines, the Innovation Fund, do you know when, when that would be launched? So the Innovation Fund was supposed to be launched this year. We were expecting it to be launched around October, November. But um, there's been a bit of a delay. So we're looking now at, at Q1 um, 2021 at that being launched. However, in the interim, um, we'll be doing is um, as part of the as part of the economic sustainability plan, we'll be running um, sort of um, mini versions of the program um, by leveraging resources available in the sustainability plan and um, funds plan to start running some of these programs and of course um, partnership with the private sector and development partners to be able to start to move this forward. Thank you very much. Sounds good. Um, let's move over to Tomi. Um, Tomi, as a founder, how have you been um, negatively or positively um, affected by the pandemic? And how are you positioning your business to ensure that you stay afloat? Um, okay, so for us as a business, um, I don't want to speak in general, but I'll speak specific to our business. So for our business in particular, some sectors have been more hit, hard hit you know, than the others, right? For financial services and fintech type apps, um, what we've seen is people are becoming more um, cognizant of the fact that, you know, all these acts of God can happen anytime, right? And they've seen how all these things can materially affect their bottom lines in the sense that, you know, there's much more, much less capital or much less cash to spend. And if people have much less cash to spend, that also translates into lower usage, you know, of, of the platforms, you know, that exist, right? But for us, because people are cognizant of the fact that, you know, they have to create some safety nets or some, some form of safety net for themselves, especially because it's, you know, tilted more towards saving slash investing, you know, people are then, you know, trying to say, okay, you know what, if this kind of thing repeats itself in the next two or in the next five or in the next six years, um, with all the massive costs and, you know, the, you know, dwindling um, levels of investments that are coming into, like, all the startups or into the ecosystem, how can I, you know, how can I manage, you know, the little resources that I have? So you see businesses trying to reach out to say, okay, do you know what, are there any investment plans or investment options, or how can I grow my capital, or, you know, how can I potentially take that one naira that I have, you know, whether cash in the bank, and how can I, you know, help or, or make it yield some returns, like for me over time, just in case this kind of thing happens again, right? So for our business, it's been more, you know, positive than negative, um, especially because people have been thinking, you know, you know, how, 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 do, I, how do I stretch my wrong way? Um, you know, just in case I get sacked tomorrow, um, how do I, you know, take the one cover that I have and, you know, extend that a little bit so I can pay for, you know, my living expenses, or I can pay for my children's school fees, or like any of those costs that you incur on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Um, so for us, it has not been gloomy. It has, it has shown like the spotlight on how important and how critical it is to um, have an investment type mentality, um, how, how, how important it is to prepare for the future. Um, and, you know, because we're in that space, definitely there's been an uptick. Um, as regards other business types or other startups, I've had conversations with founders, you know, that have been hit, um, especially things that draw money out of the pocket. So people are having services that um, are critical, right, but they are more of like taking uh, funds out of your bank account um, or drawing money out of your pocket without actually um, helping you recoup any of that in the short term, right? So a lot of those startups are, have been actively super hit because people are not thinking or a lot of the founders I've had conversations with or a lot of my friends say right now, you know, during normal times, right, like pre, pre COVID, there are lots of things that seemed normal, but because people's runway or people's cash became stretched, people now started to see it as luxury. 
right? And that affected like a lot of these businesses. Um, so for us um, as a business, it's not being bad altogether. Uh, I can say that you know, if I've had conversations with you know every ten of my friends, I have conversations with that uh, within this space, um, whether building some tech type product or um, maybe some product that's not uh, related to tech. Um, they have been hit, you know, especially the ones that um, do not have like some direct correlation to um, growth in capital. Hi, thank you very much, Tommy. I think that your sector, the financial services sector, is one uh, high growth area during this during this time. So I understand what you mean when you say we're not as hit, but you do raise some interesting points that were also covered in the survey as to the concern to, to raising, generating revenue or acquiring customers or just how they manage their finances. And, and this means, you know, there's need to invest in capa a new type of capacity building, right? For, for sustaining your business or, or building your business during this time. And I'd like to ask uh, a second to a final question um, to, to Lexi or Honey or anyone on the panelist, on the panel, um, what, how should they, how should startups position now for investment? Um, Lexi, I know you were mentioning this, but I want you to, to just uh, go deeper and explain how should they position? Should startups be wise to move to certain um, high growth sectors now? Or do they need to still stay <laughs> in the other sectors and begin to dig deeper for, for, for opportunities that they, they're not seeing? So how do they position um, so that they can um, attract some of those investments that's uh, available, funding that's available? Yeah, I think, um, I think core to it is that startups need to really understand what their number one value proposition is. What is their product that is going to be the market dominating product? And not focus a lot of efforts, I mean, look in, Nigeria, there's a lot of problems to be fixed, and sometimes it can be super attractive to go after a bunch of them, but narrowing a focus to one that one product and really tracking the data on customer engagement, I think is extremely key. Um, even if you're not yet generating revenue, those that customer engagement data can, can really be important in attracting invest, investors. Um, but secondly, Nigeria relative to the rest of the world, where a lot of investors are going to be really focusing a lot of their capital on supporting existing investee companies and opportunistically picking up other deals that they think are really rightly priced. And sometimes those are secondary deals. And if they're primary deals, those companies probably need to be a little bit more flexible on terms. Um, look, we've seen term sheets out there that are convertibles with Um, discounts to future rounds as much as you can try to push out valuation towards the future um, and even in this time engage with investors even if you uh, are aggressively fundraising share your data keep pinging them with market updates uh, whatever makes that dialogue um, uh, continue to to happen and also just retain visibility in the market. Um, but yes, um, do what you can to certainly preserve cash and maintain operational efficiency, I think is key in this market.
some more developed markets. So I think that's a good indicator of what investors are asking them to focus on, uh, which I think was a good um, a good lesson to to look at from from the report. I think it's good you know that we have these kind of conversations to encourage the meeting of the minds, um, so that both both sides can start to see can start to see more agreement. So for example, investors are looking at more remote work solutions uh, and Lexi like just buttress that again, but we're not seeing as much of a focus on that from the startup side. I think key things like that need to be addressed. I'm really happy that uh, the survey is starting to service those conversations. I think IFE also has some really good points on, on the government support uh, at this time, which I think has been quite swift. Um, and I think what needs to be seen now is just how we can get more sort of specific uh, support uh, going forward. Okay, so um, before we go into the final question for the panel, I would like to ask the audience to uh, go ahead and, and put your questions in the Q&A chat box so that we can take them, feel free to address them to any panelist or panelist. And um, it is just in one minute, what would be one um, initiative or intervention that you think <clears throat> needs to be prioritized um, to be able to support startups and investors during this time? Um, if I, you already mentioned the Innovation Fund, are you sticking with that or are there other, other thoughts? I will start with you and then we'll go around the panel. Um, what I think should be prioritized, in my opinion, is um, how to keep startups alive and ensure that those who, um, who like um, Tommy Solanke had spoken about, to ensure that they are able to survive this period so things get better. But also, um, how to understand um how to how to find innovation and tech specific interventions you know that support the people who businesses are not like the day-to-day -day, um msme that you have you know how to have specific interventions that solve the problems that these guys have and ensure that they are able to continue to disrupt and able to continue to scale um, so for me, I think those are the key things, and these are conversations that we have in How can we ensure um, that this happens? Um, and finally, how to keep uh, provide local support. So um, foreign investment is good, but there is a lot of uh, in Africa. So how do we find this idol and use this as an opportunity to bring this capital um, to good use for their Thank you. Sorry, if I just, if you can recap for me again, sorry, you were breaking and I didn't hear most of what you said. Oh, okay. Is, this, is it better now? Can you hear me clearly now? I hear you clearly. Okay. So I, I focused on three things. One, um, how to ensure that companies do not die, period. Um, how to ensure that we're able to keep them alive, especially those who are doing disruptive innovation. Uh, secondly, um, how to um, how to find um, um, specific intervention that are focused on this ecosystem. So how to be able to get interventions that are able to help companies in the tech space um, who do not necessarily need the things that the number are um, So basically, how to find interventions that are specific for them. And we're already having conversations with that with the government. And thirdly, um, how to focus on also getting African um, There's a lot of latent uh, capital in Africa. How can we harness that? And supporting companies that need to have a, a little bit of assistance on paying operational expenses, especially salaries. 
Um, so that's maybe an immediate thing. Um, maybe a little bit self-centered and longer term, I do think that having a first loss or co-investment or even a venture debt platform that can help assist investors in, um, in their investment with certain companies, I think would be quite valuable and key uh, for the longer term growth of the ecosystem. Awesome. So, you know, just, you know, trying to understand how do we make uh, startups, you know, maintain operational sustainability, really um, funding that uh, startups need as well. Um, if your point also around uh, encouraging startups to come up with innovations that are context specific is very critical, meaning that there might be need to do more in-depth research on gaps that new gaps or new market gaps that exist during this crisis so that it can spark innovative thinking and also um, and business models that are profitable but yet impactful at the same time. Um, honey, take Honey, then we'll take Tomi, and then we'll go to Q&A. No, I think those, I, I mean, I think, I mean, I'm in agreement with some of the points. I think that looking, looking forward now is our focus is now on how, what interventions we can roll out to actually support um, companies at this time. Um, some of it for us will involve working closely with investors to make sure uh, to sort of show up capability and support to them this time to continue to invest. Other aspects of programs will also support hubs, which is a wider support infrastructure around the country to continue to support startups. So for us, I'm super interested to hear, especially from the Q&A in terms of what kind of, what are the direct support that we can give at this time. Over. Awesome. To me. Okay, so for- To me, your point around what type of support should? Yes. Sorry. Um, so so I'm not going to be super granular, right? Or super specific, right? On a number of things, right? Um, and so for me, it's not really all about doling out cash. Okay, for could example, you make more growth stage companies you were breaking um it's not much more hello are they, can you hear me yes can hear you hello? clearly now awesome 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 okay so i was saying like it's not that much about doling out cash right um so i think it's interesting i've seen i've seen a couple of things here and there um where people say oh we'll give you x and we'll give you y or we'll give you this you know, this depends, you know, to support your business. Um, but I feel like it should be specific to, or there should be more intervention specific to the stages of the business and to, to the needs of the business. So for much more growth stage businesses, um, they already have established customers, they already have a cost, um, you know, consumer pipeline. So the needs are different from a smaller company, right? And you want to keep the economy running as, you know, as a whole. So you don't want, you know, super, for early stage businesses to die off. Um, so things like, you know, because people are stretched on their cash, right? So people won't be starting up businesses as frequently. Um, and those that have started businesses but have not hit the point um, at which they have, you know, a, you know, a stable, you know, source of income or they have like recurring users, you know, for them it should just be support around, you know, compliance costs, um, advisory costs, um, setup costs. Um, of the business, so infrastructural type of stuff, right? So can I give um, early stage businesses or, you know, precede type ventures, can we give them, you know, some AWS um, type um, uh, token or something around that, or whether it's a Nigerian based, you know, web host or server provider. Um, so pretty much just support around infrastructure, especially for the earlier ones. Um, just so they don't have to dip into their pockets, right, to actually pay for all these costs that are, 
you know, linked to starting a business, right? Um, so it's more around infrastructure, more around advisory, um, more around um, compliance type costs. And, you know, another thing is workspace, right? So people are starting businesses, whether they're working at hub or whether you're a growth state business and you have your own um, physical setup, I think um, it doesn't really have to be cash. Um, I know people can track all this cash um, that is being doled out to or given out to a lot of the startups. But I think it's also important to be super granular about it, right? And to be more um, needs focused, right? Focused on like the actual needs of the companies. Um, so different companies need different things. So I would say, you know, just support around all the things I mentioned, you know, for early stage and mostly growth stage as opposed to, you know, just giving our cash to people. Yeah, thank you very much, Tommy. Spot on. Um, so not just financial, but also non-financial. And supporting startups is not just um, post or high growth startups. It's, you know, those at, you know, the early stages um, all the way to growth stage. So, so that's very important point to note. So going to Q&A, uh, before I take questions from the audience, I think Lexi, you had a question for uh, if there specifically you were you're asking um, if, if you can talk about uh, the transparency on you know, the recipients of, of the fund from the Innovation Fund. So who are the, the type of recipients for, for the fund? Um, what's the budget? What's the KPI of the Innovation Fund as well as the Economic Sustainability Plan? Uh, yeah, so thanks for that, um, Lexi. So I can talk more about the Innovation Fund. Um, the Economic Sustainability Plan is a national plan that um, covers um, basically every, every aspect of the Nigerian economy. Um, so um, on that... supported but private sector led. Um, it is a fund that will focus on transparency, will focus on impact, and will, there will be um, monitoring and evaluation framework um, built into the design of the fund. Um, so the way we intend to work on the fund is to have um, a sectariat. So there will be uh, like a project implementation unit, which will be supported by the African Development Bank. Um, this is to insulate the program from political intervention as much and political influence as much as possible. Um, so the focus will focus on those, those pillars I had mentioned and specifically um, the, the KPIs will remain the main decide to go for debt and say you know what we can take a loan and we can pay back um, and there may be companies who want equity but for us as government because we know that government does not have the capacity to do this we'll be working with organizations like um, like um, like with, with people like Lexi to say we are going to match each of your investments so that's the risks your own investment so if you were to invest um, hundred thousand dollars in a company and the government makes 50,000 available from the innovation program that de risks your investment. So those sorts of partnerships are the partnerships that we'll be looking for, where we'll say to um, organizations to say, okay, you have $3 million, we're gonna match you with $3 million over this period of time, you are expecting that the funds are gonna come back when these companies are able to move on to the next series and get further investment.
that is able to help them through the through the through their process of of stabilization and growth. Um, so I'm hoping I answered your question. Um, on the economic sustainability plan, really, so it's pretty wide. So um, we're having conversations on how to just ensure that the requirements and the and the and the expectations from tech startups are different and are not like um, the way you expect somebody who is um, who, who is running a manufacturing company, for example, to 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 run. So we're we're working we're still working on that, but. I'm quite optimistic that we'll be able to get something else. I'm hoping, I, I'm hoping your, your question was well answered. Thank you very much, Ife. I think once the uh, fund is out, um, once it's launched, um, I'm sure there will be huge visibility and um, everybody would yeah. know how yeah. to and access it. And just to add that the feasibility tour of the fund will be will will, will commence July, um, will commence this month. So um, we'll be good to 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 have Lexi as one of those who and of course the UK Tech as one of those who will be spoken to to get their their own perspective on how they expect the program. Okay, great. So that's a fantastic next step. Um, awesome, great. So let's look at the next question. I think this question is from. It's from Akinola Oluwatobi and it's to Honey. It says, does the UK Nigeria Tech Hub incubate startups? And if they incubate, how does one get into the program? Honey, this question is for you. Thank you for that question. Um, we do not directly incubate uh, startups. We work with um, various um, partners on various programs throughout the year, which support uh, startups. Um, and they range from more long-term support. I think the longest we have at the moment is six weeks to more short-term uh, boot camps. Um, so the best way is to really sign up for our newsletters or follow us on social media to keep abreast with some of the programs that we're rolling out. So for example, this week we've launched Go Global 2020, which is our flagship program run by the International Tech Hub Network, which will see 20 startups from Nigeria being supported uh, to better connect uh, with the UK tech ecosystem and support our remit of supporting and growing innovation partnerships. But we are looking at various other programs that we'll be rolling out the year. So the best thing is just really to, to keep in touch and follow us and, and you'll be kept abreast. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hani. Um, if I there's another question for you, um, says how can the Nigerian government engage the banks to provide support for the startup? Um, so they've asked some bank officials if they fund startups, and they, they, they feel that the answer is always no. So how is government helping to facilitate that collaboration between banks and startups? Um. I, I don't know how confident I am in in being able to trust the banks to support startups um, because it's it's not it's not just it's not just what they do really and um, I personally think that um, um, in funding startups we need to create a different pipeline for them um, and this has to be deliberate of course and um, very focused and it has to be a wide enough pool. However, um, there are currently a couple of engagements and a couple of funds available, which you can get via the banks. Um, I know that there is a CBN fund, which is currently um, to support the technology ecosystem uh, and the technology and creative ecosystem. And you can access that through the banks. And I think um, the, the terms are pretty favorable. Um, I know, so for example, if you need software, um, you can get as much as 3 million naira or something like that. So I know those, those funds exist. I think it's just a matter of information. Um, how, how many people are aware of it? How many people are able to access it? Um, I think that's another, that's another conversation. And these are the issues that we have observed over the last few years. And um, these are things that we are trying to see how we can find a solution to how we can build, build products around. Um, that's why, for example, we're working with the Bank of Industry, who is floating a $20 million tech fund. And that is going to be strictly private sector led. Um, they're going to work with, with a venture capital firm who is going to be in charge of the fund and is going to run it. So those sort of, sort of interventions, I think, need to increase. We need to have a lot more of them so that it becomes ready, they are available and accessible to everybody. Thank you. All right, thank you.
projects, um, encouraging innovation and tech-specific interventions that solve problems for startup scaling, um, promoting local capital investment and supporting the startup ecosystem, uh, startups implementing business models that are profitable yet impactful, increasing the visibility for startups to engage in investors so that they can continue to invest, investing in capacity building, a new type of capacity building to ensure that startups are, are staying afloat and are maximizing the new market opportunities and also continuing to provide intervention funding for startups. So those are coming in. All right, while we have that, we have just one final question for Lexi, um, and then we will wrap up today's session. Um, Lexi, this is from Oluwa Tobi Oyedele, and he says, uh, since Lexi said, mentioned wrapping data of customer engagement is key, um, they want to ask, is there a way startups check the pulse of their customers to collect insights to help them innovate their products and services better? Yeah, I, well, that. let's see. Um, I guess checking the pulse and and the data are two separate issues, right? Um, I think a lot of enterprise customers themselves probably don't have very great data management platforms and don't really understand their own insights. Um, but I think can really tell a story very well um, about how your customers are engaging and maybe even discover how customers are using your platform that might not have been your ultimate intention. Um, but tracking these metrics and being able to share them with uh, your customers themselves and reflecting on how the platform is valuable for, the, for their operations monitoring your own strategy internally about focusing your product or even your business development efforts. And then likewise, translating all this data to the, your prospective investors to showing that your customers really use um, and love your platform and that there's low churn rates, that acquisition of customers is not very expensive uh, and their lifetime value is very high. I think is really important in attracting investment. Um, I'll post a couple of articles here that I think will help. Thank you very much, uh, Lexi. And if you share it here, um, or if you have it later, we can share it to everyone um, if you're able to find it. Um, but thank you very much. So um, we've come to the end of the panel session. Thank you very much to all our panelists. Very useful insights. We look forward to learning more about the progress with the NESP and the Innovation Fund. Um, I like the private, public-private collaboration going on. So we'll be able to ensure that that's super useful to the ecosystem. We've talked about the need to invest in capacity building, um, but more specifically around, you know, prepping startups to um, engage with investors, fundraising, um, understanding value proposition, even now on data, data management um, could be a, a key topic. And um, also the need for them to continue to engage um, with investors. We've also talked about the need to um, understand the market gaps in our context and um, enable and inspire innovations that address some of these gaps. The, the Policy Dialogue Series is a continu continuous project um, and we hope that beyond today, we will continue to have these enriching conversations um, as to how we can continue to support the ecosystem. This is the meeting edition and there'll be more CVs coming up. So thank you very much to all our panelists. Thank you, Ife, thank you, Lexi, thank you, Tomi, thank you, Honey, the convener and partner for the Policy Dialogue Series. Thank you all very much. Um, before we wrap up, I'll just like for everyone to leave their feedback. Like I said, we have um, more editions of the Policy Dialogue Series coming up. What would you like uh, the conversations to be around? Feel free to leave that comment on the chat box. What do you think I'm improved on? And what did you like about the, the conversation today? 
So leave all your comments in the chat box. Um, and I'll hand over now to Habiba. Thank you all very much. Welcome back, everyone. It's been quite an enlightening session um, for all of us here who are startups, who have businesses, and would um, appreciate that these policies or these interventions are implemented. Are implemented. Please, we um, urge you to please continue to vote. Please vote on the poll, and also would like you to fill out our feedback form. We will leave the link to the feedback form in the chat box so that you can please click the link and share your experience today what you'd like us to improve what you like from today's session and what we can do better next time we would also like you to um, tweet about the session your takeaways from the session using the hashtags ukng tech hub dcms tech hubs we will be sharing the hashtags in the comment section um, in the chat box so that you can take those hashtags and then put them on your post and we'll also be sharing the handles should you want to tag our handles in the conversation as well thank you all so much for being here today thank you so much for taking out the time to listen to us thank you to our panelists you were absolutely wonderful thank you to our moderator ada it couldn't have been better thank you so much for a wonderful session everybody and we look forward to having you at our next edition of the policy dialogue series COVID-19 impact on startup and investors. Thank you everybody. So now we'll just leave the link and the hashtags in the chat box so that you can go ahead and continue to send, share your feedback with us. Thank you everyone. You asking why? Thank you.